Talking to myself here. Okay, good. 3.2 is weighted and trim means and outliers. What's this all about? If there's a number that's quite different from the other numbers on the list, this number is an outlier, so it's way beyond the other data. As discussed in section 1.3, an outlier is a data point that is significantly different from the general trend in the data set. An outlier can have a considerable effect on the mean of the data. To account for this, a trimmed mean may be, more, may be a more representative measure of central tendency. When there are outliers, a trim mean is found by omitting an equal number of values from the upper and lower ends of the data. Okay? Now, here I forgot to erase it. Start over. So the data set contains these values. 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, and 20 in order. You see how 20 is way above. Maybe these were times or something like this, and then one person took 20 minutes to walk across a room or something. I guess not a room, but walk across a schoolyard, a big schoolyard. Maybe that. So 20 is definitely an outlier. Now, if you cancel the highest, though, you've got to cancel the lowest out a good trim mean. That leaves the five data points in the middle. Now let's see. A. Calculate the arithmetic mean. Now that's just the normal one. If you added all seven of those numbers up, you get 55. That's 3 plus 9 plus 5, so on. Divided by the 7, that gives you 7.9. Now identify the outliers. I already did that. I went ahead on B a little bit here. And calculate the trimmed mean. Now the trimmed mean is adding up only these middle numbers. 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9 added together will give you 32. You divide by the five numbers that you're using in the trimmed mean. And that gives you 6.4. You look at that average, explain the difference, see, between the arithmetic and trimmed mean. Well, the arithmetic mean is pretty high, 7.9. You look where 7.9 is on this scale here. It's Pretty high up there, actually. That 20 really pulled things up high. If you look at the 6.4, it's a little lower. It, it more or less is in the middle of the data set. I'd say the trim mean in this case is definitely more accurate. So that's what you're kind of going for. Okay? Now, the next page, and I'll erase things real quickly here. Uh, we're in. The next page, then, what are we working with? Weighted means and percentages of a total. I'll read along here. In a weighted mean, the data points are not all of equal value. For example, when I mark things, a teacher might assign different weights and different parts to different parts of a student's grade. Assignments might be worth 45% of a grade. Quizzes worth 15 and an exam worth the remaining 40%. In this case, each data point is worth a different percentage of the total. So let's read this example here. Frida earned grades of 85, 72, 65, and 90 on four tests in one term in her math class. Now, if each test is worth the same, what would be her final grade? Okay, easy enough. You add those test marks up, 85 plus 72 plus 65 plus 90. That's 312. And divide by the four. That's going to give you a 78% error. What about this? What's your term mark if the first test was only worth 10% of a grade? Second and third each worth 20. The fourth test worth around or worth 50%. That's the weighted mean idea. Now you've got to remember these are the actual scores. And this 10% here is how much out of the total that it's worth. Okay? Now there's 100 marks available to earn in a class here. So what we're going to do here is the weighted mean. In this case, the first test of 85, that she got 85, is only worth 10 marks. That's because of this 10% here. You can add that to the mark of 72% on the second test. That is worth. 20. Third test is worth 60, or she earned 65 marks on that data. 
room 65, and that's also worth 20 marks. And the last test, she got a 90 on it, and it was worth 50% of her total mark. That's from here. Right? That's where these are from. And because we're doing a, a final mark here, it's all out of 100 marks possible. That's the grand total. You do the arithmetic, 85 times 10 plus 72 times 20, and so on. And then divide by 100. You're going to get the following numbers. 50 plus. Oh, I've got it. What am I saying? Ah, uh, yeah. I'm trying to do this in Working so slow today. When you do that arithmetic, it should come out to be 81%. Okay? Divide by 100 after you add all those up. Okay. I know I'm going fast. You should be pausing and working through it yourself, too. Example three. The weighted mean can be used in another situation when there's a repetition of entries in a data set. The end result is the same as the arithmetic mean, but the calculation could be easier. So, for example, in her job as a server at a restaurant, Glenn earned two tips of six, three tips of eight, three tips of ten dollars, and six tips of twelve bucks. So, what's her average mean tip? Now, See if we can calculate this one of two ways. You could do this. Uh, Glenn earned two tips of six bucks. So you could say, well, the, uh, the mean is going to be six plus six plus three tips of eight. Eight plus eight plus. You can see that's going to be a long process. And then divide by the total number of tips, which is 14 tips. That's going to be more work. I'd say don't do it that way. Shorter way is to do it this way. Use arithmetic. Use multiplication. If she earned six dollars in a tip twice, we can do it that way. Six times two. Plus she earned eight dollars three times. Plus she earned ten bucks three times. Plus twelve bucks six times. Divide that by the total number of tips. By the way, the total number of tips was the two tips, plus the three tips, plus the other three, so we're at eight. Fourteen tips with the six out. Enter that into your calculator. Six times two, plus eight times three, plus ten times three, plus twelve times six. Get a number, and then divide that by fourteen. Her average tip, her mean tip, is $9.86. So there's the weighted mean for that. I'm going to stop her, and you should be able to try all the questions.